In this video, I'm going to be talking about a section of the Critique of Pure Reason called the Transcendental Doctrine of the Power of Judgment, in parentheses, or Analytic of Principles. And this is Chapter 2 called The System of All Principles of the Pure Understanding. Uh, and so I'm actually also relying a bit on the Cambridge Companion to Kant's Critique of Pure Reason. And in particular, it's chapter six by Eric Watkins, uh, which he titles The System of Principles. And so the system of principles uh, is essentially how the categories are applied to appearances. Uh, and so it's split up into uh, a few different parts. So the first part is which is what this video is going to be on, is looking at the supreme principles of analytic analytic and synthetic judgments. Uh, and so it's an epistemological uh, sort of uh, explication on the supreme principles of analytic and synthetic judgments, which uh, these right here, uh, this right here is sort of the, the table of the form of different judgments, which I talked about in a previous video. And so we can see that these different judgments, the different judgment or well, judgments come in these two different forms here. Well, in these three different sort of forms here, the quantity, quality and relation, each of which has three uh, of these sort of, well, these are logical uh, sort of syllogistic structures here, like the all S is P or the sum S is P uh, and so on and so forth. I, like I said, I talked about that in a previous video. Uh, then the next part of this, of chapter two here is uh, where we will be, where I'll be going through each of these. Uh, and in particular, the axioms of intuition, uh, the anticipations of perception uh, and the analogies of experience. Um, and so each of these are sort of combined with each of the four types of categories where the axioms of intuition uh, are the, the quantity, quantity anticipations of perception are, uh, are quality the analogies of experience are relations. Uh, that should be an L right there. And the postulates of empirical thought in general uh, is the modality. But like I said, I'll be going through that, uh, these in a bit more detail in the next, uh, probably, there'll probably be two videos. I'll probably make one that looks at uh, these two right here, uh, and then another one, possibly more than one, that looks at these, because this one is kind of the the big one here, because this has to do with things like causality and things like that that are really important for, uh, for Kant's uh, philosophical system, I guess, here. But for now, we'll talk about these uh, these supreme principles of analytic and synthetic judgments. Uh, and so first, uh, just sort of a reminder of what an analytic, uh, an analytic judgment is. So analytic, that is if we have a proposition X is P, that P is contained, so contained within this, so the predicate is contained within the subject. Uh, and so the popular, the popular example of this in philosophy is all bachelors are unmarried men. And so this concept here of unmarried men, this predicate here is contained within bachelors. And so uh, 
so I went over sort of what Kant meant by analytic statements in a previous video, but it's this sort of contain within, or even this sort of identity where uh, bachelors and unmarried men are essentially just synonyms of the same concept. And so you could switch those things around all unmarried men are bachelors or put in, you know, some sort of definition for each of them. And the, the statement would still be the same. It would still have the same meaning. Uh, but then we could also have the statement all bachelors are married men. And so how do we determine uh, like which one of these is true? And so Kant says that the supreme principle of analytic statements uh, is the principle of contradiction. Uh, and so I'll even write that here in red. So principle of contradiction. And so the principle of contradiction uh, just says that the statement X is P and X is not P cannot both be true at the same time. And so through the principle of contradiction, if we say that this one is not the case, then we know that this one is the case. Uh, but conversely, we can also say that if this one is the case, then we know that this one is not the case. Uh, and so we can gain knowledge of analytic statements through this principle of contradiction. If I say that all bachelors are married men is not true, then I know that this one is true. Uh, and conversely, if I know that this one is true, then I know that this one is not true. And so that is the supreme principle of analytic statements or analytic judgments. Uh, and so the next one is the synthetic, the supreme principle of synthetic judgments. And so as a reminder, a synthetic judgment uh, is one, it would still have that uh, form of a judgment. So uh, the form kind of like X is P, but now P is not contained, not contained within X. And so we need, uh, and so we need uh, some third thing. So Kant says we need some third thing for this. And the third thing we need is the supreme principle of synthetic judgments, which uh, I will write here in blue. So the supreme principle of synthetic judgments is the possibility of experience. So we, and that the third thing we need is to be able to have experience. And so, uh, so for instance, if we have some statement like the sky is blue. Blue is not contained in in sky. The concept of blue is not contained in sky. We need this third thing, which is experience, in order to determine whether this is a true statement. You couldn't just uh, sort of um, by the definitions of blue and the definition of sky, uh, come to the conclusion that this is either true or false. So we need experience in order to do that. Uh, and so the possibility of experience is sort of what the critique of pure reason has been talking about so far. Uh, and so Kant says uh, that there are three things for the possibility of experience. So there's inner sense. Uh, number two is the imaginations. Imaginations. Uh, synthesis. 
synthesis of representations, and I'll just put rep there. So imagination synthesis of representations. So if you remember in previous video, uh, I said that what that is, is essentially, so we have our, our intuition here, and that is sort of an immediate, an immediate experience of, say, this this object here. So we have this object here, uh, but we have the immediate experience of it at time t1, we have it at time t2, and at time t3, and it's imagination that takes all of these things here and synthesizes it into sort of the concept of that object there. Uh, and so that's what the imagination is. So it's the imagination synthesis of all of these representations at different times. Uh, and then the third one, the third one is the unity of apperception, apperception, apperceptions synthetic synthetic unity and so this is that that one that's a little bit kind of more obscure and uh, even you know this apperception idea of Kant's is I mean even he kind of talks about it in a number of different ways so it's a little bit more difficult to get a grasp on but uh, the unity of apperception is essentially um, the, the, the idea that all of these different uh, representations, all these different, uh, these different intuitions come together for a single self. So it's the unity of apperception is sort of uh, the experience of, you know, all of these different things here happening for a, the same person. So even when I'm experiencing this object at time T3, I... I know that it was me, it was, it was, you know, it was myself that had experienced it at time T1. And that's why I can uh, know that I can bring all of these different uh, representations of the object at different times together into a single, uh, a single sort of uh, concept of that object or, uh, you know, the, 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 yeah, the concept of the object, I guess. Uh, and so the unity of apperception is the sort of ability of me to know that all of these representations happen for me. Uh, and so these are the three things that are part of the possibility uh, of, of uh, experience. And so the first one, this inner sense here uh, is is that a priori, that a priori intuition. Uh, and so we talked about that, that's, you know, the, the a priori intuition is space and time. Uh, so if you remember, it's, he, uh, Kant says that it's humans that sort of bring space and time to bear on objects. And so our inner sense is our ability to bring those things to bear on our on our experiences and so that's what the inner sense is uh, and so like I said the the second one is the imagination synthesis of representations which is the a priori synthesis of imagination so uh, so this here is the imagination imagination sort of bringing all these different representations to gather uh, on the on to generate this concept of the object and the unity of apperception synthetic unity is the transcendental unity of apperception uh, with the use of concepts so uh, of the a priori concepts which were you know those those categories of understanding those pure concepts uh, but anyway the take-home message on here is uh, that Kant says that 
the principle of contradiction is how we can gain knowledge, is how we can have knowledge using, uh, using these analytic judgments. And the possibility of experience is how we can gain knowledge of synthetic judgments. So the possibility of experience is this third thing that makes it so that a synthetic judgment uh, is, uh, can be known to be true. So how we gain knowledge. Like I said, this is an epistemological explication of this. Uh, and so the important thing is that these two principles, the principle of contradiction and the possibility of experience, are the supreme principle of analytic and synthetic judgments. Uh, so yeah, in the next video, I'll be talking, like I said, uh, about the axioms of intuition and the anticipations of perception. Uh, and so anyway, I hope you found this video helpful for talking about these supreme principles of analytic and synthetic judgments. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.